In this segment, we'll be covering how to set up a new project. To create a new project, select File, New Project. From the list of templates, let's choose Empty. Click OK. Now we need to select the, the directory where we're going to store the project files. Or we can create a new directory for this. It is a good idea to create a separate folder for each project. I'm going to create my project folder on Drive D, which is my dedicated hard drive for Cubase projects on this computer. As I mentioned earlier, a dedicated hard drive is not a must, but it is a very good practice. I'm going to name my project folder New Project. Then click OK and OK. Cubase created the directory New Project and a subfolder inside it called Audio. Now we're going to name our project and save it. Select File, Save, or Save As. Name your project, New Song, for example. Then click Save. You can also create your own custom template from your current project. Select File, Save as Template, name it appropriately, and then click OK. Next time you open a new project, you can choose this template from the template list. A project template can contain audio and MIDI files, just like a regular project. If it isn't your intention to have these files as part of your template, make sure you remove them from your tracks and from the pool before you save the project as a template. Now let's examine how Cubase organizes project folders. We already know about the audio folder. Cubase will create a few more folders, edits, freeze, and Im images. The audio folder, of course, contains the project audio files. The edits folder contains the audio files created by offline editing and processing. The freeze folder contains audio files created by tracks and the VSTI freeze function. The image folder contains waveform images for audio files in the project. And the project file itself contains MIDI data, hardware information, settings, VSTI instrument settings, links to media files inside and outside the project folder, etc., etc. If you work with video files and you want to store your files in the project folder, you have to do this manually. Now we're going to check our project settings. Select Project, Project Setup. The Start field allows you to offset the start time of your project. You can enter a value in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. The latter is particularly useful for video projects. Let's leave it at the default setting for now. Project Length. I'm definitely going to change this. If your project is only 5 or 6 minutes long, there's no reason to keep its value at 10 hours. So I'm going to set its value at about 15 minutes. Cubase allows you to do this in four different ways. By entering a numeric value, by highlighting the field, and pressing the up and down arrows on your keyboard, by scrolling the wheel on your mouse forward or backward, 
or by pointing the cursor above or below the time display. The cursor will change to a plus sign or a minus sign. When you see this, click your left mouse button and this will increase or decrease the field value. Frame rate settings. These are used to synchronize Cubase with external video devices. Display format. This determines what time format appears on the project's main ruler. Display offset. This is typically used to synchronize Cubase to external media, which starts at a frame other than zero. Bar offset. This is similar to display offset, but is measured in the number of bars, and it's active when bars and beats is selected from the drop-down menu above. We discussed sample rate and bit depth in the second chapter of this tutorial. Even though a higher sample rate and bit depth gives you more flexibility, accuracy, and headroom, you are still at the mercy of the speed of your computer, your CPU, available RAM, hard drive space, and the parameters of your sound card. Set your sample rate only once and at the beginning of your project. Don't change this during your project. If you export files with different sample rates, Cubase will resample them to match your current sample rate. File type Wave and broadcast wave formats are virtually identical with some exceptions. Broadcast wave can store extra information such as author name, descriptions, time code, etc. Wave format is just fine in most cases, but due to its 32 bit nature, it has a 4 gigabyte barrier. Now, this is sufficient to hold more than six hours of CD quality audio. However, for multi channel audio, such as 5.1 surround sound and high definition formats, 32 bit and 96 kilohertz sample rates, the duration would be about 20 minutes. Wave 64 was introduced by Sony a few years back, and it addressed this very problem. Wave 64 is more suitable for long recording and larger file sizes. AIFF is the Macintosh file format. For our project, I'm going to use the broadcast wave file format. Our last option is stereo pan law. Let me say a few things about panning laws. They come from the days of analog mixers and basically address the fact that the same signals recorded on the left and right channels and panned to the center are about three decibels louder than the same signal recorded mono. In order to compensate for this, Cubase has three different panning laws. Minus three decibels, minus 4.5 decibels, minus six decibels. Zero decibels equals the off position. This is less of an issue if you use mostly stereo tracks, but if mono compatibility is important to you, you might consider going down to minus six decibels. Another issue to mention, if you move your project to a different host, for example, sonar, it may sound a little off due to different panning law settings. I'm going to leave ours at minus three decibels. 
And this concludes our segment on Project Setup.